everyone, so I'm going to be giving this a shot and I'm going to be starting my first INFP scientist video today. Now I'm in a bit of a hurry before work so typically what I'm going to do is I'm really going to do my research, prepare the topic, make sure that I really understand what I'm speaking about to convey it properly to you guys um, and put it in a bit of layman's terms so people can understand it better. Um, so really, I would like to take this opportunity to say that if any of you want to correct me on my science view, know more about uh, the topics than I do and you want to kind of clarify or kind of set other points in motion, that would be awesome. But today I'm just going to start off with a little bit of a basic concept and I really want these videos to be pretty rapid fire. Just kind of get those points out there, get an idea out there, and then have a little bit of a discussion afterwards on the topics. So for today, I want to talk about nuclear reprogramming because this is something I've been learning about in a lot of my biology classes, um, in developmental biology at the moment as well. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a definition of what that means, explain it a little bit, and then open it up for discussion with you guys after. So basically, nuclear repro reprogramming is a fancy way of saying that you're erasing or you're changing epigenetic marks in the cell. Now what epigenetic marks are are things such as DNA methylations and they're changes that happen kind of to aid in development of the cell over time because what happens with cells is they start to di differentiate. So you have the cell initially and it doesn't really have a fate plan but it will slowly differentiate into a very specific cell. So let's say a brain cell, a liver cell is on that path to differentiation. So basically how you'd be able to do nuclear reprogramming is you can do experiments where you introduce in exogenous factors such as transcription factors. So exogenous factors just means that you're bringing in things outside of the cell, introducing it in to create those necessary changes. So what the goal basically to do is a scientist will typically take a mature cell, a fibroblast cell, which is a very specialized specific kind of cell, and they're going to turn it into an induced pluripotent cell. So what that means is you're basically making your own stem cells. So this is great for science because it's a way of making stem cells without having to take them out of embryos. When you're an embryo, things are not differentiated yet, so the cells all have fates that are to be determined in a way. So it's very controversial and very non-ethical to take embryos, uh, especially human ones, and start performing experiments on them. So what scientists are trying to do is take already developed cells, so you can just extract those, and then you can work backwards and make your own stem cells to do further research on. So basically, it's making your own cells, they're going to be non-differentiated, haven't gone through any steps, and so you can kind of turn them into what you want. So it's really cool science. So on that note, what I wanted to do is kind of talk uh, very briefly about somatic cell nuclear transfer. So you guys are probably like, I've never heard of that in my life. Well, I'm sure a lot of you have, because that's basically just what cloning means. And so basically, this is along the same lines as what I was explaining before with the nuclear reprogramming. So nuclear reprogramming is just basically taking differentiated cells and going backwards, and you're able to kind of uh, give the cell a new fate or a new start at life, if you want to call it that. So in these experiments where you'd be doing cloning, what you're doing instead is you're taking an oocyte, which is basically just an egg cell, and you're able to kind of reprogram it, uh, reprogram an adult nucleus using it. So what you're going to do is you'll take an adult nucleus, so let's say a fibroblast cell or a very differentiated cell, you're going to enucleate it, so it means remove the nucleus, and transfer in the egg nucleus instead. So what that's going to do is it's going to bring it back to an embryonic state because you're bringing all these undifferentiated cells in, the very basic embryo cells, and then you're turning that basically into um, the undeveloped state. So what you can do from there is you can perform uh, different experiments. This can lead to cloning as well because what you're doing is you're providing in all this new information. And cloning is basically just taking the same copies, the same genes, and having an identical genome created. It's a really fascinating technology. They performed it in Dolly the sheep quite a number of years ago, so they were able to get it. But the problem is that the success rate is very low. Dolly didn't live for very long. Apparently there were other errors, other complications, but still it proved that um, you are actually able to clone things, which is really exciting. And it shows showed also genomic equivalence. That means that all the cells in the body contain the same genome, the same information, 
but genes kind of go shutting off on when they need to. So you never lose any chromosomes, you never lose any genomic information, but your body just kind of goes through the steps to um, turn things on when necessary, off when they need to as well. Um, and the problem is with a lot of diseases, let's say cancer for example, cancer can kind of hijack these mechanisms, turn things on, cause growth when they're not supposed to. And I'm definitely gonna be talking about cancer in a different INFP scientist. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm a little bit nervous because it's a lot of you know, analytical thinking here and you know my channel is more emotional and off the cuff. So please give me a thumbs up if you guys enjoy it and I'll definitely do a new uh, installment very soon. Bye everyone, bye my precious gems.